Hey guys, it's Ben from Board to Bits here, and today I'm going to just show you a quick tip in Unity on how to uh, create a dynamically positioning label for your UI uh, in your game. So what I'm talking about here is, say, I've got kind of an overwrought example here, but say you've got this uh, score label uh, text object, and you have this score number. And what you want is that this score number is obviously going to increase over the course of your game. So how do you want to position that? You could set it up where you say have this score over to the left here, and so this can eventually fill up with numbers, but then you've got a lot of space here, and there's sort of a disconnect between the label and the number that it's referring to. You could position this over here so that it will grow to the right, but then you've got, if you wanted it here in this corner, it really doesn't serve that purpose until until it actually, you know, the number is big enough. So what I propose is that you set it up so that you have this right in the corner here where, where you want it positioned and then let it grow and have the have the label respond to that uh, dynamically. And we're going to do this pretty easily actually, but it kind of requires knowledge of uh, Unity's, the UI systems, anchors, and their pivots, which um, for quite a while, myself included, what I really just used was this anchor presets system, which can do a lot of cool stuff in terms of stretching and positioning and that. But once you really get to know the system, like and learn a little bit more about it, you can do so much more in terms of dynamically positioning things and making sure stuff um, is where you want it to be, no matter what size screen and no matter what size screen you're dealing with, and no matter the content that you're including. So. To start, we're going to start with our score number here, and we're going to want to position it in this corner, in this top top right corner. So we are going to use our anchor presets for this one, and we're going to preset it. We're going to want, like I say, um, the anchor to be in this top right corner, and we're actually going to just position it and set its pivot there too. And I'll explain the reasons for that in one second. But we'll click like that. So now this this block is positioned right here. And now, and you'll also notice if you, um, you might have your settings up here where it says pivot and global. If it's set to center, set it to pivot so that you can actually see where your pivot is moving. This uh, makes, makes the whole pivot system a lot clearer because now if I say move my pivot X to zero, you see that little blue circle moves over here. And when I set it back to one, it moves all the way to the right. So that's real. That's your pivot, and then this is your, the white windmill looking thing is your anchor. And right now they're both right on top of each other because the um, position X and position Y of this, of the pivot to the anchor is zero. As we increase these numbers, or decrease these numbers, um, we'll see this move. And that's actually what we're gonna do right now because we don't want this right in the corner. We want it about 10 pixels away. It has a good feel to it. So we'll say negative 10 on the X, and we'll see that that has now moved negative 10. And we'll also do negative 10 on the Y. And so that's why there's now this space here. If I zoom in a little bit, you can see it a little better. Um, negative 10, negative 10, that's these two here. So that's really the core. Under, if you take nothing else away from this video, that's um, probably the best thing to take away is that this whole idea of this is your anchor, this is your pivot, when the anchor is um, all in one space like this in one single point, then that's when these numbers basically give you your distances from the anchor to the pivot. So this is positioned where we want it now, but the problem right now we still have is that this number won't grow. Like if we go to 10 points, we only see the one, like, you know, we go to any number in that text, we don't, we only have space for one number here. So how do we solve this? We're going to use one of uh, Unity's UI components, which is called, we'll add it here, the content, content Size Fitter. And this is a really cool component that will um, can help you in a lot of cases, but what it does in this situation is if we set our horizontal fit from unconstrained to preferred size, it will always set itself, set the width of itself to the size of the um, text that we have inside of it. So if we go to 100, it grows to 100. If we go to 10,000, it you know keeps on growing, which is exactly what we want. 
And it's important to note that the reason that it's growing to the left, if we move this over here, you'll see if I start adding 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, it's always moving this way to the left is because our pivot, our uh, left to right pivot is all the way on the right here. If it were centered, it would actually grow out from the middle to both sides and not um, grow this way from the corner, which is how we want it. So that's another reason that we're setting this pivot um, as our first step. So we'll just bring that back down to zero. And now the other thing we want though is for this score label to move with that. And um, this is actually really simple at this point because what we're going to do is we're really just going to child our label to the, to the score number, which is a little bit backwards I think in a lot of cases when we're creating this sort of a label and um, number system or a label and a dynamic information, we'll make the label the uh, parent because it's static and it's easier to know like that it's anchored somewhere and that it's moving around. But because we want this to be dynamically positioning, we just want this to be the child. So we're not quite finished though because because we have our um, because we have our pivot here in the middle of this and our anchor in the middle here, we're gonna run into a problem if we start adding numbers and go 10. Looking okay. Uh, once we hit like 10,000, we're starting to now uh, bleed into one another. And we don't want that. We want there to be sort of a fixed distance between the score and the score, and the label at all times. So let's bring this back down to zero again. And how do we do this? So we'll see here when we go to our label, because it's childed, we still see the frame of its parent, which is the number. And so we have this right in the, the uh, anchors right in the center here. And that's, that's our main reason that we're having the, um, the overlap, because once this gets big enough, there's, um, it's maintaining this fixed distance here. But if, this is, if the width of this, you'll see here as I'm previewing it, the width is li large enough that it's, it's overlapping. So how we fix this is that we need to move both our anchors to this edge here so that that way this will never overlap. And we're also going to move our pivot to this edge so that we have what the distance we're setting is just right here. It's this spacing. Like right now, right now the distance is half of the label plus the spacing. And let's just make it the spacing so that we know exactly what we're working with. How we're going to do that, first off we're going to move our pivot. So our pivot right now is at the x position of 0 0.5 because it's, it's a normalized number, so it starts at 0, goes to 1. So we'll make x 1, and you'll see that moves that pivot right to this right edge. Likewise, for our anchors, we're going to want to move it, move the um, x to 0. So we move our min x to 0, and we want to move our max x to 0 as well. Once your anchors are separated like that and you have a dis distance between the min and max, that's when stretching starts to happen. We don't want this, we don't want stretching in this case, so we're just going to keep them together. So now that we have this here, we can now set this distance. Um, it's about negative 20 right now, which looks okay. We could probably close it in a little bit. Let's say negative 15, eh, negative 10 even. This. No, negative 10 is probably a little too close. We'll say negative 15. I don't know why we're being picky. This is just an example. So now we have this spacing, and we'll make this zero too so it lines up properly. So now we always, we'll always have this negative 15 spacing between the left edge of the number and the right edge of the label. So now what we'll see is when we go here and we start adding numbers, we say one, zero, 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 zero. Now the score moves right along with this. And that's exactly the, the, um, what we're trying to get out of this. So this is obviously a very specific case where you have a scoreboard in the top, in the top left, or in the top right rather, and for some reason you want a separate word from the number. Um, there are, in theory, it would be easier just to make one text object that has score and then the number and it would just move around, but in like this case we want a different size for our score. Our, Scott, our score label is 40 and our number is only 28. So when you have this sort of situation, but there's other, there's other situations where this is really useful too. Say for like you have a chat window and you want you know a label at the top of your chat window that will move up and down based on how many chats there currently or you know how many messages there currently are. 
um, you could do that with just using the vertical fit instead of the horizontal fit. Um, but it's really, like I say, about understanding this, how these two things work, how this anchor is set up to be this edge, this pivot is set up to be this edge, and then you just use that distance for your spacing. So this is one way to set up some dynamic positioning for your UI, so you can help things look clean and good in your game. Hope you've enjoyed this, and I will see you guys next time.